Welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Let's take a look here at adding and removing and duplicating objects in your photographs using a feature that is in CS2 and CS3 called Vanishing Point. And it is a really cool filter and it allows you to do all kinds of things uh, such as painting and cloning and copying and pasting and it allows you to do that all on a 3D perspective plane and the advantage to doing that is that when you create photo edits okay or you edit your photos I should say everything you edit will be resized and adjusted to fit the perspective of your image or fit the perspective of the grid you've drawn which in turn will fit the perspective of the image given you've drawn a proper grid. I'm going to show you how to take care of drawing your grids and everything like that. Now this is a really really powerful filter and we're just going to touch on it here. There's really a whole lot you can do with it. But for now let's just take a look at what we're going to do here. We're going to start out with this image of these two trucks on the road here and this logo and I want to do a few things. I want to make this grass growing up over the shoulder of the road a little more than it is now. I also want to add two more wheels to the back of the truck, two more sets of wheels I should say, to the back of the truck. So four wheels will be showing on this side. And I also want to take this logo and put it on the side of the truck. And I want to do that in perspective. So when we end up doing all that, we are going to get this. Okay, you can see we have our four sets of wheels, the logos on the side of the truck. I've also changed the color of the truck. That's just sort of like a little tip I'll show you on how to easily and quickly change the color of that truck just like that. And also notice that the grass is growing up over the shoulder there, blended nicely with the grass that's here on the side of the road. So I'm going to delete all of these layers. I'm going to keep this logo because we're going to use that in a minute. I'm going to select these three layers and I'm just going to delete them. So let's start here with the background layer and I always duplicate my background layer just in case I do something, accidentally save it, whatever. I always like to have that original image. So you can shut that original image off if you want, you can leave it on, it really doesn't matter. But we've got our background copy layer here and don't worry about giving it a name. First thing you want to do is come up here to image, go down to adjustments and come over here to hue saturation. The hotkey for that is control or command if you're on a Mac, U. And it opens up the hue saturation dialog box. Now, in order to change this red to white, I want to completely desaturate it. And I also want to increase the brightness. But the problem is if I do that, my entire image turns white. So I don't really want to do that. I'm going to adjust those back to zero and what I want to do is up here this little edit drop down menu I want to select the reds because I only want to edit the reds now if I desaturate the reds and lighten the reds you can see I get a nice white truck so you can see quick before and after it's really that easy alright so now what we're going to do is open up the vanishing point filter dialog box and we're going to set up our perspective planes so Let's go filter, oops, filter, vanishing point. And the vanishing point dialog box comes up and it is full screen. Let me resize it. There we go. Now, this is the vanishing point dialog box. You can see I have some perspective grids set up already. You will not have these though, so I'm going to select them all and just use backspace to delete them all. Now, what you want to do is select the create plane tool. The hotkey for that, as you can see, is C. You can also adjust the grid size, and I'll show you what that does in just a minute. But we're going to grab the Create Plane tool. And for this truck image, it's actually going to be relatively easy to set up our perspective grid. All we need to do is find an object, preferably a rectangular object, that really shows the perspective of the image. And in this case, you can see that the top of this truck, if we drew a straight line off the top of this truck, it would head down to an imaginary point called the horizon. And if we also drew a straight line off the bottom of the truck, that would meet up at that same point somewhere off in the distance. And that's going to be our perspective. So I'm going to take a line right across the top of the truck. And I'm going to click when I'm over at the other end. I'm going to click when I'm down here at the bottom corner. And I'm going to bring it around just like 
that. Now there's my grid. I'm going to grab the zoom tool and I'm going to zoom in on these corners of the truck just to make sure I have it perfectly lined up. You can see I'm slightly off the edge of the truck. So I'm going to grab the edit plane tool and I'm just going to grab that little grid anchor point. I think officially Adobe calls them nodes or something like that. Okay, so all I'm doing here is just adjusting these little nodes to be right there on the edge of the truck. So I'm going to get basically the most accurate perspective I can get. Okay, so I've just got it lined up with the entire side of this truck. I'm going to grab the zoom tool and zoom out a little bit. Now, real quick, I mentioned a second ago that I'd show you what the plane size or the grid size, excuse me, does. So let's just select this plane and I can increase the grid size. You can see it increases basically the cell size of all of those little subdivisions of my grid. I like to see a lot of subdivisions, so I usually keep it around 25, 25 to 50, depending on the size of my image. I'm going to zoom out again. Now, we just created this grid and we don't really have any problems with it. Now I'm going to mess it up real quick just to show you something. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to grab this top point. I'm going to drag it up over here. Now you can see how the grid has just changed from being blue to yellow. A blue grid is a usable grid. A yellow grid, when the grid turns yellow, it means you're going to have some trouble. It's not really a grid or a perspective plane or not anything that Adobe knows of. And if I keep dragging and making it wild, let me see if I can, there we go. And when it turns red and the grid goes away, that means mathematically or geometrically, it's just impossible for this to be a perspective plane. So Adobe doesn't even let you do anything with it. So as long as it's showing up blue for you, uh, you're going to be doing okay. So just make sure that it's blue. I just thought I would point that out to let you know what was going on if you're trying to draw grids and not getting anywhere because they keep showing up yellow or even worse, red. So here we have our grid and I want to do a little bit more with this grid because this is going to set us up for applying the logo to the side of the truck, but we need a perspective plane down here on the ground uh, so we can copy this grass over and also something that goes down the side of the truck so we can add these wheels. Really cool thing here with Vanishing Point is in order to add grids, a really easy thing to do, well, let me just show you this real quick. Let's grab the center point, and if I just pull this straight down, you can see it expands my grid right down to the road. You can see it sort of follows the contour or the perspective, I should say, of the paint on the road. And if I want to, I can hold down the control key or the command key if you're on a Mac and click and drag, and look at that. We get a perspective grid going out across the back of the truck, just like that. But now for the ground, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to hold in the command or control key and pull one out here across the ground from the bottom of that grid coming down the side of the truck. Now I'm not holding down control, I'm just going to stretch this grid out like that. Because anything you want to clone, you have to whoops, have the grid covering that area or anything certainly that you want to sample. So now let's just cover up the uh, shoulder, excuse me, of the road here with grass. So let's grab the clone stamp tool. Now there are a couple things that are really neat about the clone stamp tool. And those are, you can set your own diameter, you can set your hardness. I usually keep it around 50, a really hard brush, it has its uses, but for here it's grass, so it's, you know, pretty much whatever goes. If you're working on something very precise, then you're probably not going to want it to be very soft. You're going to want to set the hardness up to about 100, maybe not quite 100. It really just depends on what you're working on. But it's good to know that that's there. Also the diameter of the brush, as I mentioned a second ago. You also have opacity. I'm going to leave opacity 100 because I definitely, definitely want the grass to 100% cover the shoulder of this road. There's also healing. And for now, I'm going to leave healing off. I will go back over the grass once we have our initial coat of grass, if you would, down. And I'll go back over it with healing on. And then luminance healing, I'll show you what that's all about in just a minute as well. So let's grab the clone stamp tool and the first thing you need to do is you can't just go and start using it. It's a lot like the other stamp tool. You have to hold alt and you have to select a point somewhere within one of your grids. So I'm going to select the, a point of grass, let's say right here. I'm just going to click and you can see a little green crosshair showed up and I also get a brush. Now notice with this brush as I move it around in this perspective plane, the brush size gets smaller very tiny as I get up there 
And as I come back toward myself, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Let's just take it and start painting away. And remember, we don't have any healing set yet. We'll take care of that in a minute. And actually, to kind of speed us along here, I'm just going to click down here, hold shift, and you can draw with straight lines when you're using a brush tool if you hold shift down. And I'm just going to kind of take this grass and sort of curve it back off the road the way it normally would be, and quite frankly, should be. So there, we have covered up most of the shoulder with grass. I'm going to turn heel on now, and I'm going to select new point of grass. I'm going to select right here, and I'm just going to go over some of this grass just to kind of make sure it's all blended in nicely and doesn't all look the same. You have to be careful not to get too close to the edge of the grass because this healing tends to want to grab other colors and see it's drawing in white and gray there because we got too close to the road and the paint on the road. So as long as you stay out here in the grass, you're going to be pretty safe with the heal option. So there we go. I'm going to hit OK. And you can see a quick before and after. We've gotten rid of a good chunk of the road. So that's the first thing we wanted to do. That's how you clone stuff in, um, in an image you're working on using Vanishing Point. Let's look at adding this logo to the side of the truck. I'm going to turn that logo layer on and I'm going to select it. I'm going to go up here to select, select all, and I'm going to come up here to edit, copy. I can shut this layer off. I'm going to go back to the background layer and create a new layer. I'm going to double click the words on that layer and name it logo. Now I'm going to come up here, oh you can deselect by the way, go to select, deselect. On that logo layer I'm going to go up to filter, vanishing point. Now the first thing you'll probably notice is it saved my grids. That's a big time saver. You won't have to continually redraw your grids. But let's get to business. Let's paste in this logo. It's command if you're on the Mac or control if you're on the Windows and V. So there we go. I've just pasted in this logo. Nothing looks special about the logo until we roll it over one of these perspective planes. You can see if I put it on the ground it flips it on its side and makes it look like it's going to be laying on the ground. If I put it on the truck, it does some weird stuff. Now, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to undo that. What I'm going to do is drag it straight onto the truck so I keep my orientation with the words straight up and the logo straight up the way it should be, not flipped upside down. You can see now how it would fit on the side of the truck. It's now in the perspective I want it to be, so let's hit the free transform tool. That's right there. Looks like the bounding box with the black arrow, or T is the hotkey. Grab one of the top corner handles and hold down shift and alt or shift and option if you're on the Mac and just drag this into the middle till it gets to be about that big. You can drag it toward the back of the truck like that and hit enter to finalize those changes. Oops, no we do not want to do that. Let me just go back into vanishing point. You don't want to hit enter and as you can see I it's a bad habit I have gotten into is hitting enter in vanishing point. If you hit enter it applies your changes and you don't want to do that. So here I'm just going to quickly resize this. And if you hit enter, you're probably doing the same thing with me. And I hit enter again. Oh boy, let's see if I can get this right. Here we go. Again. Resize it. And instead of hitting enter, click the edit plane tool. There we go. Um, select the marquee tool actually and come up here to heal and hit luminance healing because if we were just to deselect this now you would see that the white around the logo is slightly lighter than the white on the side of the truck and the luminance healing will change that so just hit luminance and now we can deselect and you can see here I'll hit OK now that the logo blends nicely to the side of the truck see if I just clicked out and now if I were to try to come back into vanishing point and change that logo using the luminance, luminance healing, excuse me, it wouldn't have worked. So we had to do it that way. But now that we've gotten through that, we're going to duplicate these wheels and move them forward. Grab the zoom tool and we're going to zoom in on these wheels. Now use the rectangular marquee tool or just the marquee tool as it's referred to here in Vanishing Point. And just real quick, I want to show you something. Let's just draw a selection out on the grass. Notice that even the selections you draw out here are in the same perspective that your perspective grid is. 
So let's zoom in on these wheels. I'm going to use the marquee tool. And I'm just going to start up here by the top. Make sure you get the entire wheel just like that. I am going to hold down the Alt key or the Option key and click and drag. I'm holding Shift 2 to keep this going straight. And I'm going to drop it. Okay? So I'm going to deselect by hitting Command or Control D. Now, don't panic. You're going to hit OK. Now, you can see that if I shut off the background copy layer, our wheels are up on the logo layer. That's because that's another reason here that I've created this logo layer so we can put our wheels on that layer. And what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to mask the wheels and clean up the shadows and everything like that. So the first thing I want to do is give this logo layer a mask. I just hit the apply mask button right there. Whoops, and I applied two. One mask. And I'm going to grab the uh, elliptical marquee tool. I'm actually going to shut that layer off. I'm just going to click the little eyeball to make it disappear. And what I'm looking to do is create a circular selection that follows the edge of the wheel. So what I'm doing is I'm holding down the Alt key to drag a selection out of the middle. And then I'm holding down Spacebar, and that allows me to drag my selection around. So right about like that looks pretty good. Not quite perfect enough. Let's try it again. Like that looks pretty good. Let's go back up to the logo layer and select that mask. And we're just going to flip it, flip our foreground and background color. Make sure your foreground color is black. And just hit Alt, Backspace. And that fills that selection with black in that mask. Now I'm going to unlink the mask from the layer. Let's just click in that little chain link thing in the layer area. This is going to allow me to move this layer around without moving the mask. You can see I can move my layer, which I don't want to do it like that. But you can see I can move the layer around, and it really gives me some options. I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool, and I'm going to select these wheels, just like that. I'm going to hit the V key. That gives me the Move tool. And I'm just going to move these forward a little bit. You can see without the help of Vanishing Point, I have to kind of keep nudging them up as I move forward. Just like that. Now all I need to do is grab my clone stamp tool, hit the Alt key to get some of that dark black in there, and there we go. We actually need to, well we're not going to worry about that. The mask isn't quite perfect. You can see a little bit of the grass through there, but don't worry about that. I'm sure you get the idea. You can now see that the truck has four sets of wheels, and it looks pretty realistic, except for the little mask error there, but that's not much to go in and fix that. So that's it. That's how you use Vanishing Point. That's how you can get started using Vanishing Point to add things to your photos, to duplicate things that are in your photos, and to clone things that are in your photos. So really duplicating things and adding things to your photos, um, or cloning things out. That's what I meant to say. Cloning things out of your photos, such as the shoulder of that road there. And that's a basic introduction to Vanishing Point, and I hope you've learned something from it, I hope you enjoyed it, and please go check out the site, that's www.tutvid.com, and just remember, try not to hit the enter key when you're in the Vanishing Point dialog box, as you saw, wastes a little bit of time. So that's it for this one, thanks a ton for watching.